that is arising in the church of the living God. This position has come from pride. It has come from a lot of influence of the flesh. Man of God and what we think is honor is now causing us to develop monsters. I make it a habit to stay humble. I make it a habit to serve my chief apostle. I make it a habit to be in a place of humility so that God won't have to shift me back again to a place of saying yes. That's multiple yes in God. Somebody think you get saved, they say, yeah, yeah, yes, Lord. Uh -huh. You got to say yes every day. So there is, just for a few moments, those of you that have your Bibles, you to turn with me tonight briefly to John 12, 26. John 12, chapter 26, verse. If you have it, please stand for the reading of God's word. Do you have it? Start at 23. John 26 and 23. You start at 23. Jesus 26 replied, and 23. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Mm. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say, Father? Save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Not stop right there. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this moment. We pray now, God, that you would get the glory and speak to us. We don't know what to say. We don't know how to say it. We're not trying to do it. We dare not try to do this without you. Unknown as I'm fresh. Do what only you can do. Say what only you can say. There are so many, glory to God, questions in this room even now that only you can give an answer to. There are so many people now in between making up their mind to obey you for the next phase of ministry. Speak to us, God. Speak here now. We don't know what tomorrow may bring. Father, if you give us our daily bread, we shall accomplish this work to the fulfillment of your coming. We thank you, Lord, for an ordinary presence. An ordinary presence. An ordinary presence. We ask that you come even the more. Someone with me say, come, Lord. Come, Lord. Even the more. Even the more. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. Now here, I'm not going to deal. We have so many preachers in this room. The woman of God that expedited the service. I thank God for her knowing. Let's give her a hand. Come on. There are an assignment not just on Dr. Holman's life, but there's an assignment on every one of your lives. 
And what we have to do in this hour, even the bar, is count up the cost of what it's going to take to fulfill it. To make some things really happen. Huh? In the word of God, she is speaking here, letting us know that it's going to take some major, major sacrifice. Some major, 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 praise God, obedience, charging. Because they don't tell us that all the time. They tell us, you know, it's holiness or hell, but they don't tell us, praise God, what holiness really is. It's not wearing a dolly. It's not come on long skirts. I mean, you got pants on here tonight. You know, in the old church, they tell you you're going to hell if you come in a church with slacks on. Yes, they do. But we have found ourselves making things that worse than what they really are. And so there is a lot of positioning that people, and I praise God, I won't, don't want to get in trouble here. People have put themselves in. There is, and I'm almost done here, there is something that every one of us use in this place tonight. We use it on an everyday basis. There are different styles of it. There are different sizes of it. There are different colors of it. And what I want to talk about tonight, just for a few moments, somebody shout for a few moments, huh? is a chair. A chair. A chair. There are many chairs. You're sitting in chairs tonight. Are you sitting in a chair tonight? Yeah. Come on, speak back to me now. Yes, yes. Uh, you're sitting in a chair. There are wing chairs. There are chase lounge chairs. There are club chairs. Oh, there are slipper chairs. There are all kind of chairs that the people uh, in this world sit on. But there's one particular chair, prophetess, I want to talk about tonight. It's none of those fancy chairs, Bishop English. It's none of those uh, things that some of us have in our home. Come on, I, I know that's all you want to hear like nice stuff. If you want to sit on you get home, you want to relax. You know why? I'm not talking about that tonight. I want to talk about the high chair. I want to talk about, uh, sweetheart, uh, the positioning that some of us have found ourselves in. Ah, where we are sitting so high. And I come to tell you tonight ah, that high chairs are for babies. High chairs are for toddlers. Look at that pretty girl there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ah, so what we, we experience now, I'm not talking about, now my dad got one of the baddest chairs that he sit in at the church. He got a beautiful church there right up the road. And the storm out of getting for a convocation. Praise God. In a couple of weeks. Well, he does not sit high. <laughs> there are some places that I've been in. Lord Jesus, I'm going to get in trouble tonight. But I got to obey God. There are some places that I've been in. Praise God. To minister in Sean. Where you have to walk up to the chair. God, what in the world is this? I, I felt uncomfortable with it. It, it, didn't, it didn't just didn't feel right. It didn't look right. Come on. My spirit was vexed because I was in a place where I was untouchable. Oh. Huh? Let me tell you something here. You, know, can, you can't ever get to a place where you're untouchable. When the people come on here, cannot talk to you and call you. Oh, I love it. Because God confirmed it again. When you got up and talked about how you call Dr. Holman, how you call in the middle of the night, how she come in and do this and do that. Huh? It was confirmation, amen, but what God was saying to us, how we have got to get out of this positioning of the high chair. High chair, high chair, high. Come on, I came up in church, heart of my life, I looked something before thousands, praise God. My oldest niece is here, you know I'm alive. My dad is here to tell you what I've been doing, praise God. Huh? So I've been in that place where I thought that I had arrived. So even now, God has put me in a place, mother, where I can pick up on a proud and prudent spirit immediately. That's what folks gonna say in my church when they don't got the right spirit. If you ain't got the spirit of servitude, you in the wrong place. Why? 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 Why do you say that, Bishop?
Jesus Jesus said it. I didn't come into this world to condemn the world. Come on. I can't let nobody say. Not only did he say that, Dr. Holman, that's why you're in the right position and that God has called you in. He said, I didn't come into the world for you to serve who? Me. Uh -huh. He said, I came that I might be a servant. What? I'm to you. I mean, you were here. That's what Jesus said. And so now we are so high, 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 but we are babies. We're babies, Pastor Kim. I ain't never seen so many people with temper tantrums, sweetheart. Ah, oh, anybody in this room, you get mad about everything. I told some of them hoodlums, come on and go to my church. I said, I'm coming here. I can like no whip now because you done got saved. Now the devil is an eye. You ought to shut up. Be ready to knuckle up now in the spirit. Don't come in here with no whip. That spirit. Get yourself together. But what let me tell you, when you talk to him like that, brother, then he said, you're hurting my feelings. Uh, oh, you done did this. Uh -huh. But you want to prophesy. Mm -hmm. But you want to lay hands. And then you want to direct the choir. You want to be this great this and great that. Oh, but you're in a high chair. You're thinking you something that you ain't. Something that you ain't. You got to twist it. Look at your neighbor and say, I hope you ain't got to twist it. I hope you ain't got to twist it. How they got to twist it. Well, praise God. And one thing I have learned that the kid been in the years that I've been doing what I've been doing. Praise God that many have been called. Call, call. What you mean? Call. Can sing like a mockingbird. Oh, God. Can prophesy. Can see through muddy waters. Ah, but I come to tell you tonight that gifts come without what? Repentance. Ain't nobody studying your gift. And Pastor Coleman, let me tell you this. Don't, don't, don't worry about what you don't have. Come on here. Don't worry about why you're between and betwixt in this hour and in this season. That's because you're in the right position. Come on here. You're in the low chair. Come. I come to tell you tonight, everybody that come on here that is in a high place. Oh, the song is on the song that years ago. Oh, and the high places. Shall what? Every high place shall come down. Look at your name and say it coming down. Coming down. They're coming down. Oh, but let me tell you this. One thing that we must do, that we must do, we must separate. I don't know exactly what that means, Brother Organist, but that we must separate. Because you cannot keep the things done that God has predestined for you to do connected to what you're connected to. I'm not scared because a lot of people, praise God, are connected to frauds, counterfeits. You ain't big ball. Come on here. You know, let me tell you this. You cannot be in a high place and not have a spot. My dad says it all the time. You're going to sit high. You're going to pay high. <laughs> you want to be grand and wonderful. Praise God. But when it's time for the offering, you got 10 carrots in your hand. Coming in the door. Come on here with a four leaf big call. Oh, I got a pocket of piss in and a went to the party. I'm trying to impress somebody else. I'd rather suffer for God and to dead rain for him. Come on, it's time to get some stuff for real. Yeah, yeah, babies are for hot. Hot chairs are for babies. It's not about the multitude in this hour. And my Simon job, my job right now here at Thrive who they hit there is to talk to people, praise God, that are in between. Come on here. The transition that God has going into their life. Because the enemy wants you to come on back up. I said that to her. The noticed woman from Adam's cat. I said the enemy wants you to back up from what he has told you to do. Because things are not lining up. Because things are not positioning the way you want it to. Oh, but I hear the Lord say in my spirit right now. Oh, you can have a Mahusha. Cry now, but you're getting ready to rain. Don't worry about come on here. Where you are now. Because where you are is just training you, preparing you, equipping you, giving you a real anointing, giving you a real apostolic positioning in the kingdom of God. You come in a Mahusha. You cannot find yourself. Praise God. Back it up now. High chairs are for babies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. When Jesus spoke, 
He was letting them know, grow your behind up. Stop acting like a child. Stop pretending. You know you ain't doing right. You know everything you put should come off of YouTube. I don't hear nobody here. You know, Shiva, you know, sat there and studied hard Kim around and the clock sisters all of your life. And when you get up there in the crowd, sit there and look at you like you're crazy because you finding yourself trying to get a position and get a album, get a CD, come on here, get recognition, and you ain't been more qualified to do nothing. You didn't miss it. That's what they do. So the staff, they hit and miss. Talk to my dad about somebody. Praise God, that I recommend him do praise and worship. Or they would do that. Hit and miss. He, he was anointed that night. Then the next night, praise God. When he got back there, he started operating in the flesh. Let me tell you what happened. When you get so high minded, and you know one thing about God, I looked it up in Proverbs 6. Taught a lesson on this the other way. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, talks about six things that God hates. The seventh thing is an abomination. Nowhere, say that's why I say I cannot stand folk praise God that always beating someone up, tearing them down, come on, sending them to hell. Folk know they're going to hell. Come on here, you got to give them a solution. Tell them, come on here, it's all right to quote scripture here, and yeah, that's fine. But what have you been through? Come on here, what have you come on experienced in your life? We find ourselves beating folk up because we're in a high chair and we forget we was once in the low chair. And while such the joy we was in the low chair, yes, suffering. Come on, supporting. Why are you smoking in here tonight? Why? I don't know. I don't know nothing. I know what the Lord said to me. Why, why are they not in here tonight? All of this stuff that Dr. Holman has done unto others. Why? You know why? Because they're in the hot chair. Thank you, Jesus. Mr. Holman, let me tell you this. The low chair is beneficial. Yes. I thank God for where I'm at right now concerning ministry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm in the low chair. Yes. In between, and in between mm -hmm. of what God has said. Oh. Now it's a difference in being in between, in between woman of God of what you want to do. Oh but betwixt and between what God said. What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? What did he say, Dr. Holman? What did he say, Bishop? What did he say? Oh, I know. Praise God. If he has said something unto you, amen, you're not there yet. That made y'all accomplish some great stuff in this room. Still, that's not the ultimacy of God's promise unto you. Not what you got to do is count up the cost. Count it up every day. You're in the low chair. And while you're in the low chair, God has shifted you. He's maturing you. He's shifted you to kingdom. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Because church can't do nothing no more. This whole church. It comes to that. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. That's what church do. No, 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 no. Come here. God said this. Da, da, da. Ah, no results. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. You don't have the mentality, amen, of the phase that God has us in now. All right, all right. It's not church. So guess what? You're going to have red heads coming. Mm -hmm. all right, all right. You will have women dressed like men. I don't hear nobody. 
You will have men just like women. I had a mother in my church, praise God, that I had to rebuke. Because it was a boy coming in, praise God, dressed like a woman. I saw God doing the work. I saw God shifting that mentality and healing that broken heart. It was broken this day. You're looking at the outside and ain't stunning on the inside because you're in the high chair and you can't see nothing. She put it in the back. God's going to deliver you. God's going to bring you out. God's going to deliver you. You, you got to get yourself together. That boy knew that. Yes. He didn't need nobody. Come on here telling him that. What he needed to do was experience in God. Yes. 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 Experience God. So what my job was, Dad, uh, what my job is tonight is to get God in the room. Yes. Yes. See, we, we, we're in the high place. And what we want to do is God. God's going to work it out for you. 